Hello and welcome to our BBV Tech Talk. Today with me, Wolfgang Offner. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hello everyone, thanks for having me, Spent. My name is Wolfgang Offner. I'm a senior software architect at BBV and my focus is on Azure, Kubernetes and DevOps topics. And my name is Spent Kermandi. I'm software engineer as well in BBV Software Services and uh, with a passion for cloud engineering. So what are we going to talk to, about today? Today I want to tell you something about Azure Arc because I think it's one of the coolest services at Azure right now. Azure Arc allows you to manage your infrastructure no matter where it runs. So it could be on-premise in your own data center or with another cloud provider like GCP or AWS. The cool thing is that you can project the infrastructure into Azure and then use Azure services as it was on Azure. For example, you could use Azure Monitor, Azure Policy, or Cloud Defender. So you don't have to differentiate between an Azure VM or an on-premise VM. That sounds amazing. That gives you the full power of Azure back, even if you are working with the on-premise infrastructure. Yeah, it's amazing because you can manage VMs no matter if it's Windows or Linux, but you can also manage databases or Kubernetes cluster. And you can also use your on-premise infrastructure to run Azure services like Azure App Service or um, SQL managed databases. So that's something that wasn't possible before. And now you can combine your on-premise infrastructure with the power of the cloud. Nice, I'm excited to hear more about that. So what are you going to, sh to, to show us today? First, I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to show you the architecture of Azure Arc. Mm -hmm. So now you should see my screen. Yes. And Okay. And on the bottom here, you can see what I said before. You can use your on-premise infrastructure, AWS, uh, GCP, or any other cloud provider. It doesn't matter. Then you have Azure Arc. And then you have the so-called Azure Arc uh, infrastructure. This is also what I mentioned before, you can manage VMs, Windows and Ubuntu, but also SQL Server or Kubernetes cluster. Then you also have the Azure Arc enabled data services that allows you to manage databases, like for example, um, SQL matched instances. So you can run uh, SQL databases on your infrastructure and also the Azure Arc enabled application services and there you can run Azure App Services, um, Azure Functions, Event Hub, all of that on your local uh, on-premise infrastructure. So the cool thing about this is that as a user or developer, you can use Azure App Service, for example, with all the features it has, and you only select a different location. So instead of an Azure region, you select your on-premise infrastructure and it gets installed there. And you have load balancing, uh, SL certificates, um, automatic scaling, all the nice features Azure usually provides for you. Mm -hmm. So this means after you have done the setup of um, Azure Arc, so you have your infrastructure and you have done the setup, you as a dev, um, um, when you want to use this kind of services, you you can use this as you are used to do in um, Azure. Exactly. For example, um, today I'm going to show you how to manage a Kubernetes cluster. So as a developer, I can connect to this Kubernetes cluster the same way as I would connect to an AKS cluster. The only difference is that it's uh, routed through Azure Arc to my on-premise location. But um, I, as a developer, I don't see any difference. And the same, for example, Azure App Service, I can select it the same way as if it was running in Azure. All right, nice. Okay, and the reason why I wanna show this is because I had a customer who had a quite a challenging project. So let me show you the architecture. Here you can see a simplified overview of the architecture of the project. On the left side, here we have a couple of on-premise Ubuntu VMs 
And then we have the big firewall. And on the other side, we have Azure services. And as you can see, it was not possible for Azure DevOps to go here through the firewall or for Azure Monitor. This meant that we couldn't do any deployments. Also, and also we couldn't do any useful monitoring. The only thing that worked was going from inside the VMs through the firewall to the container registry. In this case, Azure Container Registry. So as you can see, it is very hard to have um, useful information collecting, deployments, nothing could be automa automated. And so we decided to use Azure Arc. Before we used Azure Arc, we installed a Kubernetes distribution because the application was designed to run as a um, distributed microservice architecture inside of Docker Container. So if Kubernetes, we can manage all these containers. And on top of Kubernetes, we installed Azure Arc. Azure Arc installs a couple of applications in its own namespace. And these application connect securely to Azure. For example, there's an application that collects um, logs or metric information and then sends it here through the firewall to Azure Monitor. So instead of a pull of information, we have a push. So the Kubernetes cluster pushes all the information to Azure Monitor, and there we can create dashboards or alerts like we were used to. And the same works with the deployment. Again, we go from the cluster through the firewall to Azure DevOps or any other Git repository, and then we check there if there are any changes. If there are any changes detected, the Kubernetes cluster pulls these changes and installs them. And this allows us to have automatic deployments. Mm, that's amazing. So this enables you to, to work or to, to implement the solution in such a kind of restricted environment. Exactly. All we need is an open connection from inside the network to the internet through port 443. So that's HTTPS. Mm -hmm. That's a port that's usually open and it's also encrypted so we can securely connect to Azure. Mm -hmm. All right. So and what are the steps you need to do to, to install or to, to get started with Azure Arc to enable this, what you just demonstrated here? Yes, let me show you a demo how to install Azure Arc on your Kubernetes cluster. Mm -hmm. I have here a Kubernetes cluster with two nodes. You can see a, a master node and a worker node here. So here. And right now we are connected to the master node. And I have some notes on my left screen here. So the first thing I have to do is we have to install the Azure CLI. Mm -hmm. You can use a, a simple script and this downloads the Azure CLI and installs it now. Mm -hmm. This is gonna take a couple minutes and after it's finished, we can use the Azure CLI to connect to Azure and install the Azure, um, uh, Azure Arc. So do I get it right? So what you did so far is you installed on your um, on-prem machine and Kubernetes um, instance. And what you did as in the following step is now you are installing um, Azure CLI on this Kubernetes cluster. Exactly. It's on the master node of the Kubernetes cluster. And also what's interesting is we're using K3S. That's a mm -hmm. Kubernetes distribution from Rancher. And the reason why I use it, it's lightweight. So it's easy to get started. And it also shows that Azure Arc can manage any Kubernetes distribution mm -hmm. as long as it's certified from the CNCF. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so, and you did this now all, I see you are using the kubectl here. So you are now at the moment connected um, directly to this cluster. 
Exactly. Right now I'm connected via SSH. And that's the only time I have to be connected. So once Azure Arc is enabled, I can connect through Azure Arc to the uh, Kubernetes cluster. So my developer, for example, they don't need to have any access to this network or the cluster itself. Mm. And it's amazing in the time of remote working. So you don't to need to be um, at the office or next in the, in the network there. And um, you can do this from home as well through a secure connection. Exactly. That's something we're going to show probably in the next video. But for now, let's continue with the installation. Mm -hmm. um, right. Azure CLI is installed. And next, we have to install an extension for the Azure CLI. This extension is needed to install Azure Arc. So right now, it's downloading it and installing. This should be finished in a couple of seconds. Mm -hmm. So that's all you need to do for installing the extension. So the Azure CLI and then this extension, which is then installed on this machine or in this uh, master of this um, Kubernetes cluster. Exactly. And now we can already log in into Azure. Hmm. So let's open this website and copy this code. I have it on my second screen. So now any second I should be logged in. And now that I'm logged in, I have to install a couple of uh, resource provider that are needed for Azure Arc. Mm -hmm. So that's a total of three resource provider. Mm -hmm. so, so let's Kubernetes, install them quickly. Kubernetes configuration. And this Azure provider, why do we need this? And why are not they already installed by default? Azure Arc has a dependency on this uh, resource provider. So Azure Arc needs them to be available. And the reason why they are not installed is um, there are many reasons. It could be, for example, like a firewall where you don't open all your ports because you might need them later. You only open the ports you need right now. And mm -hmm. it's the same with the service provider. You only want to install what you need right now. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, a, it's a, a kind of a security measurement. So you have to control what kind of services you can use and what kind of services you should not use in your context. Exactly. You, you can control which service provider or resource provider you want to allow to be installed. Mm -hmm. And since I'm the administrator, I'm allowed to install everything, but a normal developer might not be allowed to do that. Mm -hmm. All right. So installing them takes around 10 minutes, but since I already have installed them, I can check and they should be already registered. Mm -hmm. So as you can see here, the registration state is already registered. If um, they weren't registered yet, the registration state would be registering. So this indicates that it's not ready yet. Mm -hmm. So we have to wait uh, until they are registered, okay? Exactly. And as I said, it might take up to 10 minutes, but once it's installed, it's there. Mm -hmm. And that's already everything you need. Now we can install Azure Arc. And again, we use the Azure CLI. And all you have to provide is a name. So in this case, I provide a simple name, K3S Arc. Then you provide a resource group, the tech demo Arc and a location. So since the closest location to me is West Europe, I select West Europe because I want to have Azure Arc as close to my on-premise infrastructure as possible. Mm -hmm. And which kind um, um, of locations are yet pro supported? Do you know that? Um, currently, there are not all Azure locations supported. So the last time I checked, for example, Switzerland wasn't supported yet. So the closest location are West Europe or maybe France Central. Um, but there are more and more coming every week. And mm -hmm. if you select a location that's not available yet, the Azure CLI will tell you that it's not available there. And it will also give you all the options of locations that are available right now. Mm -hmm. So now um, what it's doing is it's downloading Helm. So 
um, Azure Arc is installed via Helm charts. And once they are installed, they will run into in a new namespace, the Azure Arc namespace, and we're gonna take a look at the applications. But this will take around five to 10 minutes. So I would say we come back once this is installed. So it's been around 10 minutes and our Azure Arc should be installed now. There's a simple command with which we can check this. All we have to provide is the resource group we had before, and we have everything uh, printed in a table. So this command will print all the Azure Arc instances in this resource group. Since we only installed one, there should be one displayed now. And here you can see the Azure Arc instance, the K3S Arc, the one we have installed before. And if we check the namespace on our Kubernetes cluster, we also can see the Azure Arc uh, namespace has been installed. Mm -hmm. So this means all the necessary um, pods and services which are required for Azure Arc are now in this namespace available. Exactly. Let's have a look at what's running there. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of applications in there. I think it's 10 different applications. And the names of the pod are quite descriptive. So for example, here you have uh, an application called Extension Manager. This um, application is used to manage the extensions. Ext extensions are used for Azure Monitor or for the deployment. We will see this in a later video. Or also you have here a proxy connection to the Azure Active Directory. And here we have a matrix agent. So this agent is collecting matrix information and sends it to Azure. So if I go to the Azure portal, to the tech demo arc, I can see that the Kubernetes arc, uh, Azure Arc instance has been installed there. And if I click on it, I get some information about my Kubernetes cluster. For example, down here, I can see the version, or I can also see the distribution. That's a K3S cluster. And as we use from Azure, we see here on the left side, several panes um, and functionality we can use. For example, here we have the insights or the matrix. That's also something we're gonna show in a later video, how to use Azure Monitor. Or we can also see um, here GitOps. This is also something we're gonna use for the deployment. All right, so okay. this enables you to have the same options which you are used to with uh, the normal managed Kubernetes by Azure. Or are they are there any uh, options missing uh, here? Um, yeah, it's not the same functionality as uh, Azure Kubernetes service right now, because Azure Arc is quite a young service. I think it was announced two years ago for the first time. And there are also some features still in preview. Like for example, here the uh, Kubernetes resources, that's still a preview feature. And also some of the extensions are also still in preview. But I feel that Microsoft is investing a lot of money and time into Azure Arc and their new features almost every week. So I think it will catch up sooner than later. All right, thank you very much, Wolfgang, for your introduction about Azure Arc and how you can get started with Azure Arc. Today we learned how you can connect your on-prem cluster Kubernetes cluster to Azure. In the next video, we will learn how you can securely connect to this on-prem Kubernetes cluster through Azure Arc. More information you will find in our video description. So stay tuned and see you next time.